Good afternoon. Thank God that uh, we have this opportunity to study further about the Word of God. I'm going to give a lesson on scriptural authority. This will help us to understand how the Bible teaches and what does God want to teach us. You know, today, many are searching for the truth. But because they fail to understand, they fail to see how God wants us to know things. So they lose interest. But this afternoon, we are going to learn what is authority. We are going to study how the Bible teaches. Because many are wondering, how come that we have only one Bible, the same Bible, and yet there are many religions all claiming to get their doctrines from the Bible. Now, is God a God of confusion? Why is it that when you give a class of 40 students, give them a book on arithmetic or calculus. You ask them. They give the same answer. You give them a book on biology or zoology. You ask them a question. They give the same answer. You give them a book on grammar. Ask them about agreement of subject and verb, they give the same answer. How come you give the Bible, you ask them one question, they give 40 different answers. Why? Is it because God does not know how to write a book? Is that the reason? Well, we are going to study from the scripture, especially for those who are searching for the truth. In your own time, you can clearly see the answer to questions, especially about religion. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, it's very obvious that the reason there are many religions today is because they don't agree. And yet they have one book, the same Bible, and yet they don't agree. Now, as we go on in this study, you will find out the reasons and you will be able to correct it for yourself, especially for those of you who wanted to teach the Bible and for those of you who wanted to know the truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, know the truth. So it is possible to know the truth. Because the truth will set you free. Free from what? Jesus is talking about in verse 34, the freedom is salvation. So in other words, to be saved, you have to know the truth. Because the truth will set you free or will save you. On the contrary, False teaching will damn our souls in hell. And that is the very reason why we have 
to know the truth. Otherwise, failure to understand the truth will send our souls to hell. And this is the very reason we need to study because we need to study the Bible because we cannot afford to lose our soul for a simple mistake of understanding the scripture. So the first thing we will learn about is what is authority. Then we will learn that God has authority over man. Then we learn that we must have Bible authority. Next, we will learn how to determine what is authorized by God. We will also be studying general and specific authority, age and additions, and of course, the silence of God is not authority. Let's go to the first lesson. Our first lesson is, what is scriptural authority? In religion, <clears throat> we must have authority for everything we do. So, by definition, what is authority? Authority means the power or the right to command or act. That is authority. The one who has the power, the one who has the command to tell you to act, that's authority. And not only that, it means that he has the power not only to command, but that his commands must be obeyed. That's authority. Because... If someone tells you to do something and he doesn't have the authority, then you have the right to reject or to refuse. But when we talk of authority, he has the power to command and he expects that the command he gave must be obeyed. That is authority. Now, the one acts by the instruction or order of one who has the legal right. In other words, in religion, we have to do things the right way because the one who commanded us has the authority. And it must come from the right source. You do not obey someone who does not have the authority. Okay. Now, in religion, we learn that it is Jesus who has the authority. Now, let me share with you some things. Why is it necessary for us to know the truth. In Matthew 22, 29, when they asked Jesus, Jesus answered, you are mistaken, not knowing the truth. You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. So, one reason why people will fail to enter heaven is because they don't know the scriptures. They don't know the content of the scriptures. And yet, they expect to go to heaven. So one reason why people will miss heaven is simply ignorance of the scriptures. That's another. Now, in 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul said, study and this explains our presence in 
spending some time because we want to study God's Word. Now, you will notice that in everything in our daily lives, we are ruled by authority. Maybe we just do not notice it. But actually, if you try to look closer, all our actions are what? Ruled by authority. Let me give you an example. We have authority as far as weight and measurement is concerned. We have authority as far as time is concerned. We have authority as far as the day, the month, and the year is concerned. We have authority as far as monetary value of currencies are concerned. We have authority as far as the quality of food and drug are concerned. So we also have authority for speed and direction. And so with our lessons, math or English or whatever scientific field of study. But let me go into detail. If I may ask you the question, how do we know the length or the distance? How do you use your estimate? As far as I am concerned, this is about 10 meters. Another would say, oh, I've been a carpenter for so many years. This is only nine and a half meters. So, what is happening? Amos said, can two walk together except they be agreed? Of course, they will never agree. They will never be able to walk together. So what are we going to do? We're going to use a, a steel meter. See, this meter's thick or this steel is the authority. In other words, this tells us who is right and who is wrong. It is possible that only one is right. Impossible for both to be right. There is even a possibility that both can be wrong. But who would settle in case there are arguments, discussions concerning a certain topic, and in this case, about distance, who will settle? This is the authority. And when we measure, and it says 11 meters, both will keep quiet because they know they are wrong. So in other words, we understand that authority is the one excuse me, who tells us what is wrong and what is right, who is wrong and who is right. That's the authority. Okay, now how about the weight of an object? You go to a store, you say, I'll buy five kilos of rice. Do you just <coughs> go and get your bag? And put rice and then walk away. What would the sales lady say? Of course, she will be complaining. So, in order for you to agree, what do you do? What will you do with the rice? You put the rice on the weighing scale. And when it says five kilos, so <coughs> what will happen? Both will agree. You see, authority will settle disputes. Authority will determine who is right and who is wrong. Okay, let's go to another example. How do we know what time is it? How do we know? You will notice in one room, 
both are there at the same time and at the same space. You try to ask the, at them about, look at their timepiece. You will find out they don't have the same time. Now, does it mean to say that there is no correct time? There is. And that is what we call the standard time. So, how do you settle who has the right time? You ask, what's the standard time? The standard time says it is, let us say, it's one o'clock. So, those who have 11, 12.55, 12.10, 12.50, they will all what? They have to adjust. So, when all adjust to the standard time, will there still be confusion? Will there still be argument or discussion? So we see that the standard what, settles argument. The standard settles problem because the standard tells who is right and who is wrong. Okay, does these signs have any meaning? Do, do they have meaning? <coughs> they all have meanings. Why is it that? Every driver will follow these signs. Well, if you you touch it, it's only a piece of metal. Why is it that people, drivers, will obey? Well, in fact, these are only signs because these signs has meanings. No left turn, no right turn, no U turn. You see? Do not enter one way and so on and so forth. Why is there a red light? That's only a light. See? But that traffic light determines in case there is an accident, that light determines who is at fault, who is right, and who has made the violation. So these are what? The authority. Suppose you're driving in a highway and it says no right turn. Do you tell yourself, so what if I drive right? Do you tell yourself, do you do that? No. Why? Because you know you will fall down into a pit, into a ravine, and that would cost your life. You see, that's one thing we have to understand and learn about authority, because it is for our safety. Now, how do we know the correct day, month, year, and age of a person? Do you look at his face and say, oh, you're about 60 years old, oh, you're about 70, oh, you're 15? Is that the way how you determine the age of a person? What are we going to do? You ask, when was she born? Then you will be able to know his age, how old is he? Why? Let's look at this. What? This is the authority as far as what? The day, the month, the year, and the age of a person is concerned. Well, for us who has been who are experiencing this quarantine, there are times I forget what day is it. Because the whole week I'm inside the house, so sometimes I could no longer determine <laughs> what day is it. See? But in order to be able to settle a problem, when you ask three people about the age of a person, they will be given giving different answers. But when he tells you, the person tells you the day he was born, then everybody will be able to give the correct 
H. So you see, this is the authority. Now how about this one? Who determines the right medicine? For example, you go to a doctor and he gives you the what? The prescription. So you go to the pharmacy and you ask help from a sales lady and she would say, Sir, we don't have this medicine. We don't have this this kind of medicine. Well, do you tell the sales lady, you just give me any medicine? Do you do that? No, because you know, you might be in danger because you are not an authority as far as medicine is concerned. Okay? So, the same thing that happened. How about in religion? Is there no authority in religion who will tell us what is the right religion? Who will tell us what is the right thing to do in order to be saved? If in our daily activities we are controlled by authority, you mean to say in religion there is no authority that everyone has the right to his own belief when in fact this is the most important thing that we have to be talking about the destiny of our soul. We cannot afford to be wrong as far as religion is concerned. If we make mistake in this earthly authority, well, we can just say, I'm mistaken, I'm wrong. Next time, I won't do that. But what about in religion? When you make a mistake, that's eternity. And yet people today do not care because they thought that they have the right to their own belief. Well, as far as our constitution is concerned, yes, we have that right. We even have the right not to believe in God. <laughs> we even have the right to do what to do as far as religion is concerned. But as far as God is concerned, does God have no right to tell us what to believe, what not to believe? Let's find out. The question of authority is one of the most important, but particularly in religion where the most important transaction of all, which is salvation and destiny of our soul, is at stake. So, the real point at issue in every religious discussion and controversy is that of authority. An agreement can never be reached and unity never achieved unless we have what? A standard of authority. So in other words, when people come together having different authority as far as religion is concerned, they will never reach a point of agreement. Never. So what do they need? One single authority. Now this afternoon, we are going to see what is our authority in religion. In Judges 21-25, there was a point in the history of Israel that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That is what is happening today. Every man did what he thought was right in his eyes. And so they even say, well, that's none of your business. 
don't tell me what to do about religion. Why? Because they thought they had that right. But you will find out that one reason why there are so many religions today, division, very rampant, every time you will see that there are new religion popping up. Why? Because they don't have authority in religion. Now, let's see. Who has the authority? In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus said, All, all authority is given to Jesus Christ. In heaven? No. Not only in heaven, but even on earth. So in other words, no human being, no soul is ever given by Jesus Christ even an iota of authority, none. No human being has the authority as far as religion is concerned. All authority is in Jesus Christ. Okay. In verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all things, everything that Jesus taught. Jesus said, you teach them all things that I have commanded you. It's not an option. It's a command. And so Jesus said, everything that I have commanded you, you teach it to those whom you have baptized. Now, let's make it clear. How do we know that Jesus is the sole authority? Read your Bible. John 12, 48 to 50. Let us read verse 48. This came from the very lips of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say? He that rejected me. In other words, Jesus was saying that we can reject him. How? And receive it not my words. When a person does not receive the words of Jesus Christ, when a person does not obey what Jesus commanded, that person is rejecting Jesus Christ. Let's see. He that rejected me, how? And receiveth not my words. So rejecting Jesus Christ it's not by saying, oh, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. That's not the way how we reject. We reject Jesus Christ by rejecting his words. But he gave a warning. Hath one that judgeth him. So that person who rejected my words, he better watch out. Because some, something will judge him. What is that? The word that I have spoken. The words that Jesus had spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. That's very clear. That settles the question. What is our authority in religion today? The words of Jesus Christ. Let me repeat. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. What will be the basis of judgment on the last day? The words of Jesus Christ. You will not be judged by the way how you think. You will not be judged by what you like. You will not be judged by the doctrine of your denomination or the doctrine of your church. Take note. Every church that exists today on the face of this earth has a doctrine different from another church. 
But I want to tell you that those doctrines are not the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Those doctrines are doctrines that were made by men. And you will not be judged by the doctrine of your church. You will not be judged by the doctrine of your church. In the Securities and Exchange Commission, there are about 4,000 different churches today in the Philippines alone. Not one of those doctrines will be used by Jesus Christ on the Day of Judgment. Now, where did those words of Jesus Christ come from? Where did they come from? Verse 15, Jesus said, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. In other words, the very words that came out of the lips of our Lord Jesus Christ came from the Father. The Father even told him what to speak. Verse 15, And I know that his command is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So where did the words that Jesus said come from? It came from the Father. In other words, when you reject the words of Jesus Christ, you are rejecting what the Father commanded Jesus to say. And so, another reason why people will miss heaven is because they thought they are saved when in fact they are lost. Oh, what a sad day. Where do we find that? In Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23. Matthew 7. What did Jesus say? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done many wonders? Have we not done miracles? Have we not prophesied in your name? That's in verse 22. Why are they complaining? Why? Because in verse 23, Jesus said, I never knew you. Jesus did not say, oh, once upon a time I knew you, but now I have forgotten you. No, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, I never knew you. Since the day you were born, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Oh, but have they not meant, done many wonderful things? This is a classical example of people who thought they are saved, but they are lost. Now, why are they lost? You read in verse 21, because they did not do they did not do the Father's will. So in other words, there's an easy way to go to hell. You just avoid doing what the Father commanded through Jesus Christ. Then there's no problem, you see. But we are not interested of how to go to hell. Our interest is how to determine that what I'm doing is the Father's will in order for me to go to heaven. You cannot afford to be mistaken. You cannot play with your souls. No. And that is why it is important to learn this lesson. So, what do we learn? When Jesus said, He that rejected me and received not my words, and one that judged him, the words that I had spoken, the same, shall judge him in the last day. That settled the problem of what is our supreme authority in religion. What is our authority in religion? 
the words of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm bringing this out because many today are teaching things which are contrary to what Jesus had said. They teach doctrine contrary to what the apostles have taught. That's the danger. That is why we learn that in order for a man to go to heaven, he must abide in the doctrine of Christ. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. But those who do not abide in the doctrine of Christ, what? He's lost. So, what is our authority in religion? The words of Jesus Christ. What is our authority as far as distance is concerned? The meter stick, the yard stick. What is our authority as far as weight is concerned? The wing scale. What is our authority as far as time is concerned? Our time piece, the standard time. What is our authority as far as medicine is concerned? The doctor, what he prescribed. You see? So, in religion, what is our authority? The words that Jesus has spoken. Those are the words that will judge us in the last day. Now, what do you think will happen when all religion will follow what Jesus had said? What do you think will happen? We will all be speaking the same thing. We will all be walking by the same rule, even in basketball or any game, there's a rule, you see, and that's the rule that must be followed. We must speak as the declarations or the oracles of God. So in other words, what the Bible speaks, that is what we speak. Okay? We, we are like the microphone. When somebody speaks behind the microphone, what goes up at the speaker. The same words that were spoken by the speaker. That is what God wants us to do. We speak as the oracle of God. We speak where the Bible speaks. And we must be silent where the Bible is silent. So, what therefore is our authority in religion? The doctrines made by men, the different faith, the statement of faith made by men, is that our authority in religion? No. Our authority in religion is the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible. We will rest. Let's take a break for a few minutes and then we will go to the next lesson which is about the Bible. Thank you for listening. Stay for a moment. We'll have a break.